warning. This episode contains strong language. So the way that I help is I verbally talk to people or I talk to fans. If I see them, if I see them in public and say, hey, look, how are you feeling about this? All right, well, take it easy. Don't get too upset if this doesn't go your way or if this does go your way. Just, you know, fight for your rights. And, um, you know, that's why I liked, uh, you know, Ruth, you know, she passed away RGB and stuff. And it's like she fought for women's rights, which I've always fought for, too, because my mom raised me as a single mother. And I've always seen women really struggle. Um, and so, I mean, you just kind of fight with what you can possibly you fight the good fight and you and you fight the battles that actually need to be fought you know don't don't fight every single thing if someone has a, a small opinion on something you just go okay cool yeah welcome to the lone star play podcast i'm your host patrick scott armstrong join me and a famous guest every monday wednesday and friday we discuss their career life food texas and everything in between let's get started Another episode of the Lone Star Play podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. I've got another great one for you, Mr. Rich O'Toole. That's my guest today. Rich is a Houston native um, and still, you know, boom, still rocking Texas here. Um, great country musician, done some pop stuff. We talk about that a little bit about, you know, staying in your lane when it comes to music, uh, your stick, you know, what do you do? What do you this? What do you that? R- really, really great guy. I had a really great conversation with him. Um, and, you know, we also talked about um, something that's, you know, sort of at the forefront of my mind, and I guess at his too, which is re- really just like civil discourse, right? And and we're, we're kind of lost on that in America of just being able to talk to each other, right? Without guns blazing, if you will. Um, you know, so yeah, just a really good podcast. This is a good podcast episode, right? Where a podcast just covers all these different topics, blah, 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 topics. Um, you know, that that's that's basically what, what happens here. So really great conversation. Really enjoyed it uh, with Rich. Um, you know, really excited to get together with him one day and, uh, you know, do some food. He's also into that. So, you know, make sure you check him out on social media. Um, all right. Uh, but before we get to the episode... Don't forget, check us out online. Please go to our website, thelonestarplate.com. You can find everything um, about us, past episodes. Um, you know, check us out on social media as well. Don't forget, we got a YouTube channel. Um, it's at Texas Real Food. So look up Texas Real Food. Where you'll find our our playlist there because again, the podcast is presented by Texas Real Food. So that's where you'll find us. We also break it down into little clips on YouTube, which we don't do anywhere else. So that's sort of exclusive to YouTube. Um, you know, easier to digest. We, we pick out some of the best parts from each episode and give you these cool little clips. Um, so, all right. Uh, okay, let's get to the episode. Rich O'Toole, the man, enjoyed it. All right, so again, enough of me. This is what I do every time, guys. Uh, I'm so sorry. All right. Rich O'Toole, enjoy. And I'll talk to people, it just doesn't maybe match the persona they have on stage, which I get, right? You can't necessarily rock that uh, all the time, <laughs> you know, wh- whatever, you, you know, your shtick might be, if, it, if you have a shtick, right? If, if yeah. that's the deal, right? Which is, which is interesting. So, I'm, I'm, you know, this just randomly came up right now. So I'm curious about for you, like when you started, did, was that something you considered? Like, okay, I got to have some sort of thing or, you know what I mean? I'm just going to be singer songwriter and, and let's just see what, ha- how, how did that work for you? Yeah, I think it was a thing where um, my name's funny enough as it is. I mean, Rich O'Toole, it's like, I've been getting beat up as a kid, just with the last <laughs> name having the word tool in it. You know, it's like, oh. And so, I mean, that's always been a thing like, hey, no tool, here comes tool, he's a tool. So, I mean, that's a stick by itself. I mean, just saying, hey, Rich O'Toole's playing here tonight, people are like, okay, well, I guess we got to see this. I don't know what, what the hell this is, you know? And it's country rock music. And so, yeah. I have, I think right now, like tacos, uh, on my Instagram, it's all about tacos and food. I'm, I'm kind of known as like Mr. Taco. When I go on tour, I always check out the best taco joints. Um, and then the, the stick is kind of like, you know, I'm kind of funny on Twitter and I'm funny on stage. So you kind of have to, I mean, at the end of the day, it is entertainment. You're in the entertainment industry, so you need to entertain somewhat. Someone's buying a ticket 
to see you. It all boils down to the circus. It's like someone buying a ticket, they want to see, they want to be entertained. If I just got up there and was like, thanks for coming, played songs and left, they'd be like, that was entertainment. So you just have to, I think everyone has a stick, even if they know it or not, they're up there somewhat doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense, right? I mean, you're going to develop something. What, even if it's just your stick is um, me. Yeah. You know. Your stick is not having a stick. That's still a yeah. stick. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that, that's, that's hilarious. Yeah, you can't avoid it. Um, I, I think that's in any, probably in any part of the entertainment um, industry, for sure. Um, well, Rich, let's talk a little bit. I always like to talk to people um, about, you know, this is called the Lone Star Play, right? Lone Star. We've got the Texas. Oh. Texas flag uh, over here. Um, let's talk a little bit about, you know, Texas, a little bit about growing up in Texas. Where, where were you born? Were you born in Texas? Yeah, born and raised in uh, Houston, Texas. Uh, that's where I'm at right now. Um, up to the age, age of 29, I lived in uh, Austin, Houston, back and forth. I grew up in Houston. Um, I left, I went to school at Texas A&M. After I graduated, I went and lived in Austin. Um, and then I moved back to Houston when I couldn't pay rent and like I lived with my mom, <laughs> like we all starving artists do. Uh, then I moved to LA for about five years. Uh, my thirties, I say I'm only 36 right now, but uh, for, from 30 to 34, I lived in LA, I lived in Nashville from 35 to 36. And now I'm, uh, I sold my house in Nashville and I'm moving back to Houston to be closer to my family. And then the bands in a tour a lot more and we're putting out more and more music. So it's like, I couldn't keep flying back and forth. And um, so I'm a, I'm a big Texan. I advocate for it. You know, it's funny about being Texas. You don't know Texas is cool until you like go outside of Texas. Like we just always thought Texas was Texas. You know? 100%. Yeah, that, that's absolutely. Well, you, now you can compare it, right? Perspective. Yeah. You know, for sure. And Texas is well known everywhere, man. That's the great thing about Texas. Like I lived in Europe and they everybody knows texas man it don't matter you know if you were to say like i'm from idaho or something like what they wouldn't even (laughs) you know know but texas is like holy shit you're from texas they they love it they think it's great they but they also think we're all riding around on horses shooting uh six shooters literally that's what they think happens here like (laughs) like, yeah no and you play the persona i think like i we've played in italy five times and um people would come to our concerts like in full, like they're dressed like the set of like tombstone, like full, like <laughs> where, and the post, the poster for me uh, was, it just said Rich O'Toole. And then it was a picture of George Strait. That's, that's it. <laughs> and these people just showed up thinking they were going to see like George Strait or something. They, they, they just think like a Texan is here. We're going to see a Texan. And yeah, they do. They, people hilarious. had like Texas colors and flags and you're like, Whoa. Yeah, man, it is. And, and the biggest, I, I would say, I mean, the biggest thing that people said to me was like Walker, Texas Ranger. That's what they wanted to know about was like Chuck Norris. <laughs> so right. I, yeah. Of all of Texas history and everything, of te- like that's at least in Spain where I live, like that's what they would talk to me about, Walker. Walker, yeah. Texas. Like, and in, in fact, they expected like I knew him or something. Like, yeah, Chuck and I train together yeah. or something, you know, like, <laughs> but again, <laughs> I'm his deputy. Uh, you know, it's like, no, I don't know Chuck Norris. Jesus Christ. Uh, you know? um, so what made you get into music? I'm always curious why people get into music. Were your parents, you, you know, you're around it. Did you, I don't know. You had a, just a, someone told you, hey, Rich, you sound, you were five years old and they said, Rich, you sound amazing. And you were like, doing this yeah no no my family's not musical uh my dad would sing off key in the car and stuff my family's not (laughs) musical i played baseball and i was a class clown kind of and so i knew i had some type of artistic ability because i was always always saw things as art like i see food as art i see music as art you know and uh, i remember i I broke my arm uh, in baseball or hurt my elbow and uh, I brought a guitar because I was starting to play guitar at 16. I brought, I brought him the bus one time and I would just make up songs about the coaches and people and people would be like the next week, be like, Hey, sing that song again about, you made up about coach, you know, coach is fat, you know, something like that. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. And then I realized that like, I, I kind of had a gift just writing music. I, I could just write yeah. songs. I could pick up a guitar and just write a song about somebody. And I didn't know that that was, you know, when you, when you see it, when you see like, uh, when you're in high school and you see like, there's always a kid that's really good at drawing. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Like you're yeah. over shoulder and he's, he's doing Mickey mouse and you're like, how did you do that? I guess I have that with songwriting. I just didn't know that I, I had that. And you know, and that's the thing It's like, sometimes you're just given a gift and you try to exploit it the best you can. And yeah, I made it, I ended up making a living off of it. And, um, it's been really hard, but it's, it's kind of like, I can pick up a guitar and write you a song about, uh, the city of San Angelo. You know, I, I can do that. And it, to me, it's not nothing to do. It's just, I can just do it, you know? And so it just came naturally. Um, and you have to work on it just like any other artist, but, uh, man, I, it, it just, it just, it just happened. My family's not musical now. No one, in, no one, no one is in, in music. I wish I did because like, if I would have had a dad or a mom that was in the business, it wouldn't have been so hard, but you know? Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Um, what, what, like when you're writing a song, what, first of all, like who are your influences? Like, who do you like to listen to and, you know, d does that bleed into your songwriting a little bit or? Yeah, for sure. Curious. I think uh, what did it for me was Robert L. Keane. Um, because growing up, it was like George Strait and like 90s country. And that was good. You know, that was good stuff. But I didn't know that you could do it independently until someone handed me a tape of like Robert L. Keane when I was like 14, 15. And then still to this day, I... I think Keen is still probably one of the greatest songwriters of our generation. I think he's even better than Dylan. Wow. But people like, when I say that, they'll be like, Oh, you're crazy. But it's like, well, go back and listen to his records and tell me that guy's not one of the greatest songwriters of all time. I mean, he'll never, um, he'll never, no one will ever, ever say you're better than Dylan because Dylan's story was so unique. But when you're talking about like Dylan, you're also talking about like Towns Van Zandt, Guy Clark, Robert O'Keefe you know, Jerry Jeff Walker, these guys were real songwriters. And that's what's something that we haven't in Texas music, we try to strive to become, or at least I do is have that type of integrity. Because now in, in Texas music, it's kind of about the business of it. It's like, how many people can I fit in this, you know, 10,000 seat arena, and we're all making money and selling merch. People are more focused on making a cool hat than they are focusing on a song. Yeah, Or like, you know, Keen and Towns Van Zandt back in the day, were actually really like writing real legit like poetry and that's that's how i got into it i was like wait a second there is an avenue for me to make a living in this and it starts with like keen you know and that's so he's always been like one of my idols in texas and you know no that's awesome Sorry, yeah that was i so mean deep. i won't be so deep on this podcast i'm trying to make it funny but <laughs> what are you talking about that's what a podcast is right it's not supposed to be a normal right like i don't know we're on cma in the morning or something, right? A quick, <laughs> yeah, exactly, a quick yeah. three minute, three minute segment. Like, Hey, tell me about your life. Go. You have 60 seconds. Like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, no, nah, this is, that's what it's about, man. Absolutely. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I, I, I love hearing these. Um, I just love hearing these answers actually that this is what, um, and I'm sure our listeners and stuff, this is what, this is the kind of stuff they want to hear. First of all, it's just why, the why of something right like we right. people that know you and know your music and whatever and they can look you up from your music and this and that but what they can't get a lot of times from you know maybe hearing your, are the whys of all this so that's what this is for so yeah no that's 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 really interesting um so what about now what do you think about you know i know you mentioned you know how you think texas music. let's let's dig deeper into that a little bit about like texas music because that's really its own category right do you consider like texas music being its own thing its own animal right its own sort of industry i think in texas i, I mean we're on we're on the podcast right now i think texas is every everything is texas yeah and from its mexican food from its barbecue from its music Texas really could. I think Texas is being kind by staying in the United States. <laughs> we, we really, we, you know what I'm saying? We really could just be our own country. If you, like, I, I, just, I just found out that we have our own power grid. We're, we're, we're the only other state besides, I think there's one other, that's on a complete power grid. So we can, oh. we have our own ship channel. We have our own power grid. We have our own oil supply. We have know. our own. It, it's, uh, we really could just put a border around Texas and just be our own country which other countries would probably really respect um so i think texas has always been just texas it's like no you know i, I lived in nashville for a long time and i still work there because i run a record label out of nashville and nashville doesn't like nashville they put out some pop stuff yada 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 texas is it's the real deal man you're, you're getting a real steak you're putting on real boots you're gonna hear real music 
Yeah, one thing about a Texan that I love about Texas music is they're quick to call the BS. They're going to go, no, that's not, I can't get, I can't, I can't release like a, a Jonas Brothers song in Texas and try to pull the wool over someone's eyes and tell them it's, it's country music. They're going to say, no, I'm a Texan. I grew up a Texan. There's no bullshit in a Texan, you know? And that's yeah. the thing about Texas music is uh, it's a real deal. Uh, so you, you can't get away with it. You can't be a fake. You know, you can't get away with it. You got to, and you'll get embarrassed. And I have been too. I've tried to release some, some pop stuff here and there and straight up someone calls me out on, on Twitter and says, this is not very Texan of you. And it's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's hilarious. That is hilarious. Oh my God. Twitter. Jesus. Don't get me started. Oh my right. God. Like yeah. my God. Um, wow. That's, um, yeah, that's crazy. Wow. I never thought about it that way. That's, um, I like that. I like to hear that. That makes me, makes me feel good about Texas stuff. And, you know, to be, to be honest with you, Rich, like one, I don't really listen to a lot of music. I know that sounds strange, no. but I, I really don't even listen to music. Like, I mean, unless it's just like, Hey, I tell Alexa, put on Latin music. And we, I just listen to whatever comes right. up, literally just whatever pops up. I, I listen to it. Um, now I listen to, you know, you're coming on. So I listen to a lot of your, your records and stuff and, uh, you know, and that'll come back. But it's like I'm riding in the car. I don't listen to music. I will go a whole road trip without putting on a song. How weird is that? Or anything. Not an audio book. Not really. I, I think that the, the mystery of the road is beautiful. I listen. I like the windows down. I like hearing. Yeah, the, the windows down. Exactly. I love just the sound yeah. of life happening right i love that sound of life and then my thoughts because if i have that music on it really like interrupts my thoughts obviously so like i like right. thinking a lot i know that sounds weird like that's like my favorite that's my favorite hobby is thinking is that weird like i love to no, just it's sit not weird i, like, I love I like to, to sit actually, right I'm, I'm a restaurant guy i like to eat alone a lot and people go why do you like to eat alone because i'm like i like to think and when I'm sitting there eating, I, I just want to hear my own thoughts about what's going on. You know, when you're eating with someone, you're constantly, you're not even enjoying the food. You're just kind of eating when you're not talking and then you're not really enjoying it. You're not really listening to the conversation next to you. You're not really thinking in your own mind what's going on in a restaurant. Thinking is its own art. And I think that it should be respected. You know, a lot of times you just want to think, especially in the morning. Like I always had, I have, I have rules with, with my, I'm saying my mom's house around buying a house in Houston. So I'm staying here and, my rule is like, don't talk to me before, before lunch. And I had with girlfriends too. And it's like, I just, for the first two hours I'm waking up, I'm really just in my own head thinking about what's going on for the day. What's, what's going on in the world. And uh, you kind of, it's kind of cool to think when you think about th thinking is your brain is actually saying things to you. Like you're like, your brain's kind of actually going and you're like, wait a second, it's saying something. Yeah. And um, thinking is such a, a meditational thought. Um, it's genius. You know, most people, most people don't take time to sit and just listen to themselves think. Absolutely. Well, compute yeah. all the stuff I've heard, right? And take in, just try to compute. I sound like some fucking robot. You know, just like, yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Process. Oh, here we go again. Process. Uh, you know what I mean? Just, yeah, process. That's the word I'm using. Process all the information I've sort of taken in, you know, thoughts that I've been having, ideas, stances I want to take on things, right? right. That may be happening in the world. Well, I got to think about it. I don't just quickly jump on board with something. Somebody throws something out. Boom. I'm, I'm, I support it. No, let me, let me think about it. Right. So I like to sit and think about those things and make sure that if I do support it, I know why. And if I'm asked about, it, I can defend it. Right. So that's important right. to me. Um, I wasn't always that way. And I'm, I'm not saying I'm perfect by no means. Uh, I can be emotional as well. Um, but that's probably why I like to implement, implement that in my life. I love that you take, you know, a couple hours in the morning for yourself and sort of shut everything. I like that a lot. Um, you know, they say that very successful, powerful people, um, in fact, that's what they do in the morning is the first few hours, they don't, this is a big one. They don't respond to people's emails the first thing. Right they they send out their own emails does that make sense like you don't yeah the, the first thing you're doing is not replying to all your inbox for the first three hours right all you're doing is and it's not a bad thing but you're taking care of their problems first right instead of right. your own so the first thing they do is like you you know meditate maybe get a meal work out send out your own stuff take care of you first get you settled and then boom you're ready for the day now you can yeah interact reply whatever the case may be yeah so right. i love that i love that that's positive that, that's yeah. really awesome 
Yeah. It's time to think. Lot. Thinking is thinking is powerful, and people don't do enough of it, you know. And critical and thinking. We rob, we rob people of thinking. It's yeah. When you when you ask someone a question, especially this generation, where you if we don't get a text back within an hour, it's like you got ghosted or. This person <laughs> yeah. Well, give them a give them a second to think about what totally. you just asked them. Totally. I mean, if someone asks you something deep over a text message, I can't reply back yeah. with like winky face. See you Friday. <laughs> like no, that's. You get me time to digest this and think about yeah. the best possible solution. And you know, most problems call, come from overreacting. And when you really think about something, you can give your time, time and, and thought are like the ultimate equation of solving the biggest problem is time and thought. And most people don't use one or the other. You know, they take yeah. too much time and they take too little. Absolutely. And look, I, I think that uh, some people don't even have the time. So I yeah, kind of see. I see it as a luxury in some sense. Um, is it necessary in your life? Yeah, I think critical thinking is absolutely something that's not even taught enough. Um, but um, yeah, some people, you know, they're working, they got kids, they got this, they got that, they got whatever the case may be. Uh, my brother is always a good example for me because we live completely opposite lives. You know, I don't have kids. Um, he has kids, right? So it's just any single parent, right? It's like, just night and day. Like if I ask him, Hey, did you do this that we talked about or something? I was like, dude, are you kidding me? I not yet. You know? And, and for me, it's like, yeah, I've had, I've done it twice or I've, I've had time to think about it. So in a way I, you know, I guess I'm, God, what's the word? I'm empathetic to other people that maybe can't as well. So, you know, no, I understand that. You know, kids, I'm, I'm, I want to have kids one day. I just, yeah. uh, all my friends have had them before. And, I don't. Um, I don't want kids. That's another, another, another thing about thought is children interrupt thought. Um, I was, that's why I, I don't want raised, kids. I don't I want know, kids. I was raised where kids were to be seen, not, not heard. You, you didn't just, nowadays when I'll be at my friend's house and they have kids and they'll walk in, a kid will just enter the conversation. It's like, you know, having a conversation with an adult, it's deep. A child is walking and throw a toy in the middle of the air. To, back in the day, my dad would, would have just grabbed me and, you know, said no. You're yeah, not doing me too. This. You're me too. in the other room. Yeah. Sorry, you're not to be heard when adults are speaking. Nowadays, it's like kids are. I think kids people have like a like George Carlin called it a like a kid, child fetish. Like they're like so. Children have all these like rights, and it's like when I was a kid, I had rights. I didn't. I wasn't allowed <laughs> to talk at dinner. I ate whatever that whatever was served. It, it sucked being a kid. It's supposed to suck being a kid. And nowadays, yeah. it's like kids are like worshipped. You know, that's an interesting way to, to look at <laughs> don't, it. Yeah. Don't call me a child hater. I don't want to be on this. Podcast. No, no, no. I, I, look, I am. I, we're talking about thinking it interrupts thought. Children do. Look, I'll say thought. it. I'll say it right now. I don't really like kids. I mean, I say, I look, I don't want kids. I don't like it. I, as I, yeah. I don't, I like, I love my nephews. Okay. I love my nephews and I don't mind kid. Right. Okay. Kids. Great. Go do your thing. But I don't want, don't bring around me. I don't. I just, I don't want kids. Uh, that's just yeah. the thing that kind of, no, it's your choice. You don't have to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, um, but do I hate them? I don't know. They're a little just annoying sometimes, especially if they're not, I'm not related to them. Fuck. I don't, I'm not putting oh, up yeah. with that shit. Get the, I just, God damn it. Kids. Uh, look, they're our future. Blah, blah, blah. All right. I get it. Uh, I pay taxes. I let them get good education. I want them to do well. Um, I was a kid. I get it. I just, yeah, just, that's not for me. Um, you know, I think you have to make now if something were to happen with my wife and I and we were to have kids or something, I would be 100 percent into it. Right. If, if yeah, of course, you if, would. For, if, for, if for whatever reason. But if I can, if I can avoid it, I, I really don't mind. Um, yeah, it's kind of a tough. I think you, but I think you would raise a kid the way that a child should be raised. I think when I go to a restaurant, and see a kid screaming the whole time. I'm like, dude, take care. Take care of this problem. Oh yeah. It's like someone that someone that buys a dog and doesn't raise it properly. It's like, hey, look, you got to put a lot of time into this and you gotta let this kid know it's a responsibility. When at this restaurant, he cannot be doing this. It's responsibility. Yeah. And and the response I get is, Well, Rich, wait till you have kids. I'm like, wait till I do have kids. I'll, I'll probably be an asshole dad. But the kid's gonna grow <laughs> up being a great kid and he'll respect me and going, Dad, I'm glad you were hard on me as a kid because now I'm a great adult. Versus a kid that it wasn't raised properly becomes a shitty adult. And that's the, that's the issue we have right now with our country is like we're, we, we've let so many unwell raised children now try to have a voice in, in our country. And it's like, no, you're sorry, but your childhood was terrible and you're a terrible person. And now you want to do this? No, I'm sorry. You get in line. 
you know, no one ever told you no, but the world's going to tell you no. And no is a great word for a child. No. I also know every day. It's like when I, I remember the first time I got to have like Kool-Aid with sugar in it. I was like, what? Y'all, y'all have sugar in this? Like my mom, this is purple water for us. So, you know, we always heard no. Um, and that's a problem with children. People are having kids and they're just, they have a hard time saying no. And no needs to come back in our society. We need to just tell people no more. You can't just say yes all the time. It's not, yes, I have rights. I have rights. No, 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 no. Yes. One out, of, one out of 100 times you get a yes, you know. I don't know where I went off on this, but. <laughs> no, it's fine. I say, hey, this is, this, again, this is what podcast or this is what it's all about. We all, this is what it's about, man. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, to, to me, it just depends the issue, you know you got to ask me what the issue is specifically and I'll tell you how I feel about it. You know what I mean? It's hard for me right. to make a, a yes, yes, no, no sort of thing uh, just because, well, I don't know. What are we talking about? So maybe it should be a yes. Uh, it, you know, I don't know. know. I, absolutely. Well, I don't know. Again, it would just, whatever the issue is, let, let me hear. But in some ways it's like, what, what does my opinion matter to some certain things, right? Like that's not, has nothing to do with me. Um, you know, I'm a very bygones be bygone sort of person. So I can yeah. piss off. I can piss off a lot of my liberal friends. I'm liberal. I would say my, I'm liberal myself, but yeah. I piss off a lot of my liberal friends because I'm a weird liberal. I, I can, I can critique my own side. No problem. You know, in fact, I look forward to that uh, a lot. In fact, I think if you can't right critique your thoughts, your, your beliefs, or th then where are you, what are you doing? If you right. can't like look at it and say, hey, this, this to me seems wrong. We need to be doing this, blah, 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 you know, this and that. So, you know, like anybody, I would say right now, we're, we need to feel more united, right? We, we need to feel more united and, um, and, and that's it. That's, that's really what it comes down to. Um, you know, it's tough. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of shit happening in the world right now, especially you just throw it all together, man, the pandemic and racial tensions and an election and not just any election right what no matter how you feel about either candidate this is a crazy election right there's that yeah. you can't you can't deny that right like that's that's uh not up in the air um so it just makes for this explosive sort yeah, of environment tyson holyfield. i mean this is probably one of the biggest fights yeah. we're gonna have in our, in our tyson right versus now. holyfield i like that it's that's i funny. mean it's i'm tuning in i don't know <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm the kind of guy where I'm like, I don't know what, I don't know where I'm at. I, yeah. I know that I have, I have the right to say, I think that's horseshit, yeah. but I'm okay, I'm okay with like debating, but I stay out of politics online because half of my fans love Biden, half of my fans love Trump. So I don't say anything. I don't fucking say anything. Yeah, I get my it. Deal is I'm all over the board. I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm against abortion, but I'm also, I'm pro, I mean, I'm pro, I'm anti-gun, I'm pro, I don't even know, I don't know what I am. I'm more of just like a take it as a come guy. Like, yeah, that seems like that's worth shit. Or, Hey, I think this will work. Or I think this will. So I can't say I'm left or right, man. I, I'm just more like, if I see an issue, I'm like, yeah, I think that's horseshit. Um, and that's it. You know, I don't even know where you stand on it. And I'm not a guy that's going to go out and preach to my fans because I, I really think that people are adults and I don't, they don't need rich O'Toole or Robert O'Keen or some entertainer to tell them how to vote. You're a, you're a grown ass man. Listen to how you feel about the country and go vote. Why, 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 why do we need to hear from a celebrity to tell yeah. someone how to vote? I mean, that's just obnoxious. If you're, if you're really that focused on a celebrity to vote, then you're really not even tuned into the issue. You're just tuned in because you want to be point. liked by the celebrity. I mean, that's just, that's sure. just idiotic. They should not let celebrities put a voice out there because it's just like, come on. It really, I, I love. Well, but we can't them. stop them. But we can't stop them, right? Like that's freedom. Them, See, I'm a big. Yeah. I got to defend everything. No, yeah. Like, right. yeah. You know, it's like, but I'm with you. I, I don't want to hear the opinion. But you know what? I scroll past. Right? You have scroll the power past. to scroll past. That's why I tell people all the time. I don't like that. Scroll past it. Just get past it. You don't need to focus on it. Then you know. Right. Do I agree? Do I'm with you? Like, do I care what? Fucking Gal Gadot, uh, which I love that woman, by the way. Gal, I hope I say her name right. Uh, Wonder Woman. What she has to say about the no, I, I don't. I, is it going to no. affect my decision? You're right. If you're, if you're, if that affects who you're going to vote for, you are not listening to the issues or policies <laughs> issue. at all. Okay, like at all. That is, that is the, literally the last thing you think. Oh well, Wonder Woman says it's this person, so I'm going to vote for that person. That is not how you should be voting. But at the same time, I would say 
It's your vote. You get to do what you want with it. So I'm also tired of people telling people how to vote and who to right. vote for. And if you don't vote this way, you're a fucking asshole or you're this or whatever. I'm tired of hearing that too. Hey, man, this is my vote. I get to do what I want on either side. Somebody says yeah. I'm voting for Trump. Okay, that's your choice. I'm voting for Biden. That's your choice. Yeah. Well, I don't, I, I just, that, d- d- look, if you want to debate and give the issues, okay, I get it. I mean, I'm all about debating. I love debating. I love talking to people in a constructive way. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. That's, that's the key. And I, I have been definitely caught up in the Facebook trying to go back and forth and it's a nightmare, man. I don't do it anymore. I definitely used to get caught up in that and I regret it. Like I regret it so much, man, because it's like, well, nobody you're not, wins. You're there's not going to get, you, yeah, you can't there's win. There's no referee. It's like Facebook it's appoints not, a referee. No, no one wins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, actually, nobody be wins. Cool, actually, Facebook had a, a guy that came on and was like, okay, I've read all this. So-and-so won. <laughs> that, right this Funny comment would probably end up killing that person they would rather house and fucking shoot them dude that's hilarious that's actually really funny like they'd be like yep, yeah this con this comment really took it over be like oh yeah. shit you know your 19th comment um really persuaded us to, to declare you the winner they get like a trophy in the mail like yeah, a Facebook, that, like that you won a pointless battle um, <laughs> a pointless thank battle you. thank it's you for totally doing this. pointless to- totally kids, pointless. By the way, while they're doing all this, their kids in their re- re- uh, room, like trying to learn to read, and like probably <laughs> eating something they shouldn't. It, it, it's like it's such a waste of time. These yeah. idiots that get on there and, and battle yeah. over Facebook. Yeah, but no, I, look, I've, right. done it, I've done it too. I've done it yeah. too. So we're not like I'm not saying that everyone's done it. It's just more of you think about it now. And the people that can't walk away from something, I'm just entertained by it. Like I can have a full conversation with a Trump supporter. And just let's go back and forth. And then I'll be like, all right, are you hungry? Let's get something to eat. Where most people will be like, fuck you and your family and I hope you die. Like they yeah, would never, totally. I never want to talk to you again. I, how many times have I ever expressed my opinion on social media? And then I, just, I get a hundred emails. I'm never listening to your music again. Really? Really? Is, is that a deal? Because I, t- I expressed an opinion. You're never going to listen to my music again. Come on, man. I, I just, I, my favorite actor would be like, I, I love, um, I don't know, I love Johnny Depp. I love uh, Kevin Costner. But I don't, when they talk about politics, I don't give a shit. I only like them because of Field of Dreams. I don't like them because Pirates of the Caribbean. I don't yeah. give a shit about their politics. I don't, I don't yeah. turn on Pirates of the Caribbean off because he has a stance against Trump. I don't give a shit. <laughs> That's not why I turned the thing on the fucking first place. Yeah. No, I 100% agree, man. A- absolutely. Um, again, I let them give their opinion. No problem. I don't yeah. care. It's a, it's a, you should be allowed to have your opinion, too. That's another thing. Like, that's not fair for celebrities to be like, oh, you're not allowed to have opinions. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Th- yeah. That's not fair either. Uh, but at the same time, we maybe shouldn't put so much you know, weight behind that m- maybe uh, influencing our decision. But if they're like, hey, get out and vote. Okay, I can get behind that message, right? Like, that's not a, a bad message. But if they're like, if you don't vote for Biden, you're a fucking asshole. Okay, well, then, you know, moving on. Am I still going to watch your mu- movies or listen to music? Absolutely. Yeah, I don't care. I, yeah, I don't care about that. Again, if you're going to make that stance when somebody all of a sudden posts something online, you're like, I'm not listening to your music anymore. Dude, why didn't you start there? Before you ever listen to a, a word of their music, why didn't you find out everything about them and then make the decision there? Because now you yeah. just, right? You sound like an idiot in a lot of ways. Like, oh, now you're not listening. I mean, now you're just making this stance that all they're doing is putting you in a position where, one, they're probably lying. They're going to keep listening to the music, right? Yeah, because they probably, they probably bought shit. They've downloaded it. They're not just getting rid of it, right? That's so stupid. They're just trying to you know, whatever. And there's some people that maybe will, they probably weren't listening to a lot of it to begin with, or they were going to get rid of you at any point for some other reason. Right. So screw yeah. them, dude. You can't. Screw it's, them, we, live in a, we live in a really funny time right now. And um, it is, it is uh, the word that comes to mind obnoxious. I mean, some people are just obnoxious and you wish them the best. And you know, you want what's best for this country at the end of the day. You just want, you want to have America get better and i mean and i understand both sides i I honestly understand both sides i do i totally do i i it's just one of those things we're like well i just hope we make the best decision and and move forward you know which i don't know but it's almost i feel like we're getting closer the closest we've ever been to like a civil war because 
and not only is left and right, left and right, it is like left and right. I mean, it is so far apart from yeah. coming together that it's almost like we should draw a line down the middle of the country and be like, all right, everyone liberal live in the West, everyone <laughs> on the right. You just run your own two Amer- – we just have to have two Americas, like Trump's yeah. America and Biden's America. And you just, you just pick where you want to go live because it's not – no one's ever going to be happy about this. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that's um, true, man. It's scary. It is scary. It is, man. It's um, – yeah, I, I think the biggest thing, again, no matter what side you stand on – or who you want to vote for, what's to me most upsetting about everything is just the climate of not being able to have a discussion about certain things. That scares right. me. When that starts right. being shut off, it doesn't matter what side you're on because it doesn't matter what opinions you're going to bring in, right? If, if that gets shut off, if civil discourse and civil discussion gets uh, shut off, we're screwed, you know, like it's, it's done for in my opinion, because we're always going to have, like you said, differing ideas. I mean, that's just, that that is never going to change. That is just never going to change. So if we can't learn to, like you said, you can talk to a Trump supporter, maybe you either agree or disagree, whatever you go have lunch after. Of course, that's how I am. Look, I have conservatives on, on the show all the time, but I have liberals on as well. I have a conservative Senator coming on next week. Right. I, right. I've had a conservative political uh, correspondent on the Hill, uh, Sagar and Jetty. Right. So I, you know, I don't care, it, but we can just talk. And at the end of it, it's great. Have a good day. There's no problem. Right. We can have discussions. I, I just don't want that to be cut off. That, that's what scares me the most. I, I can imagine a scenario. I mean, especially like uh, I don't I don't think that raisins should go on potato salad, but I wouldn't show up to the picnic and grab the bowl and fucking throw it in the air <laughs> i just wouldn't i just wouldn't eat the potato salad yeah you know but on on, on issues it, that thing about that is like it's a it, there's issues out there that are serious that people should get angry about sure stuff like what we're, well, we're talking about you shouldn't be angry about it but now it's driven people to the point where they're like running people over to cars throwing up Molotov cocktails. It's like, man, look, these are real issues. I get it. But like, that's why we, that's why we have a logistic system. If you really care, quit your job, get a political science degree and go out there and make a change. If not, you, you have to understand you trust people that you elected. And that's why voting is so you're right. Voting is where it starts. Get out and vote. If you want to make a change, it, it's so hard. You know, this world we live in is it's, it's uh, it can be very frustrating. So a hundred percent, man. And you know, look, I, like you said, there are serious issues that people do need to get angry at, and I get it. And I can, rel- you know, not that I can relate, but I can understand why there's a lot of anger out there right now, whether it be about race or whatever's happening. I get it. I mean, I understand. Now, are some of the things that are happening because of it, right? You know, the, 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 uh, the looting, uh, right. burning, burning down businesses. Now, I don't agree with that. Right? I'm not going to get behind that. But do no. I understand the force of what led to it? Yes, I get it. You know, Um, yeah, it's it's scary. Um, you know, it it is scary time right now. You know, it's funny at the beginning of all the protests that were happening here in Austin, um, which is where I'm at. Yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking about going to some of these protests, right? Some of these black lives matter protests. Okay. Let let me get out here. Let me see what's going on. Uh, You know, let me just check it out. And I just, I don't know. I was thinking, "Mm, I don't know if I just feel safe about it. And sure enough, you know, what happens is dude gets shot. Right. And yeah. guys, literally two miles from my house. I live off South Congress. It happened right yeah. off of South Congress, right? Just right down the, the road, sort of. Right. So I'm thinking, you know, I don't, I just don't want to show up to these things. It, it scares me. I'm worried about getting hurt or something happening. Um, I have responsibilities. I have, I have people that rely on me to take care of them. And if, you know, right. so that that's, you know, I, I just, that, yeah, I can't get behind that, right? So that that's brings what, a good point. That's uh, most people that would, would riot and, and break a, a, sh- a shop window has never had a, been there's never been probably laid on the mortgage or owns their own business or understands that, that that you're not what you're doing is not. You know, my mom always told me to, to avoid trouble. Don't run into it. Don't run into a crowd. Don't run into trouble. There's trouble around every corner, and most people, it's like there's a better way to protest. You want to protest, do it peacefully and write write your congressman. Just do your homework, you know, put some groundwork into it. Go meet with Congress. They have office hours. Go, go talk to them. You know, what we're seeing now is this kind of, of years of frustration. And I understand that, but there's a way, to, there's a way to take it out. And there's a way not to. Yeah. And that's the hardest part of the, you know, when it's humans is, is understanding how to, how to do it constructively. Yeah. You know? 
So, Absolutely, man. Look and, at us, man. Look at us solving the world's yeah. problems right now. Yeah. Right now, baby. Boom. <laughs> right. This is it right here. Well, we're probably going to get nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize, I'm assuming. Uh, this no, one I'm episode. Uh, All it takes is Obama yeah. to tweet this out. We're, That's we're it. Fired. One, one <laughs> episode. Um, you know, look, it's right. I mean, it's like. There's no secret to it. Again, like you said, I, I, I understand all the frustration. I understand everything that's happening. I hope everything just starts to, you know, die down and, um, and we can start to move forward on some of these changes. But if real systematic changes need to happen, voting is, is where it's at. You've got to it's vote. Right You've got to get out there and vote and, and really put people in positions. I mean, that's where real changes is definitely going to happen. Showing up to city council meetings, getting your voice heard, you know, th- those sort of things. Um, yeah, I, I completely agree. But at the same time, you see something that happened, you know, yesterday with Breonna Taylor and, and uh, Kentucky and two police officers got shot after the verdict was read out. So, yeah. again, again, no matter where you stand on things, this is not good. Right. Not these, good. Thing, these things are not good. Um, people are dying and it's just not good. I, I don't agree with the police officers dying. I definitely don't agree with everyone else dying, right? Uh, black people dying um, that shouldn't be dying a hundred percent. It's, it's yeah. just disturbing, man. It kill it kills me. It breaks my heart. Um, and I just want to see us on a road to sort of some sort of redemption. And, you know, tensions are just so high right now. I just want the election to be over. That's that I got this like anxiety about it. And I hate politics, dude. Like before I just hate, po- I never was into politics or, you know, really a big deal to me and now it's just at the forefront of everything and everybody wants to talk about it and you know it's uh it's it's killing me it's at the forefront of everything like you know right now i'm buying a house here in houston and like we've even talked we're like well let's wait a month until after the election because interest rates will change it's like i'm buying a house based on an election like wow this thing really is put people in turmoil i mean it really the amount of depression anxiety mental health that it's caused america Ooh, yeah. um you know i i have, I have anxiety i suffer from uh, panic attacks and stuff and i get it i wake up in the morning someone's like lump in my throat and i'm like man i just feel i feel like i'm at i feel like it's thanksgiving at 11 p.m and you're all your drunk uncles are just like screaming <laughs> that anxiety and that's and that, that's what's going on in our country it's like that hour yeah. of just 13 year old puberty where everyone is just like they don't know who they are they're crying in their bedroom and I, just, I think America's going through their, like, puberty. We don't know who we are, what we are as a stage, and it's just really, really scary. <laughs> it is scary, man. I think, um, you know, look, there's some changes that absolutely need to happen. And um, I think we're on that path. You know, is it rocky? Yes, 100%. And there's just a lot of, I mean, we need to start making changes because if not, this is going to continue, right? If we don't actually start doing something, yeah, and it is scary. It is um, I feel bad for people that, again, don't even have this luxury to even sit and think and talk about it. They're just having to deal with the repercussions of it. You know, they're working two jobs, they're whatever right. they're doing, they're struggling, they're this, they're that, and they're just having to um, deal with this as well. Um, you know, it's, it's heartbreaking, man. I just want to see people get back to work, right? The pandemic is, is, is hurting businesses as well. Um, so, yeah, that's, it's, it's, yeah, just would love to see that. I mean, that's the best thing we can do you know, I could sit and bitch and moan about everything, but the real, the reality of things is, you know, do what you can. And that's what I try to do on the podcast and in my own personal life, which is just voice that message. Let's get together, right? Let's continue to have discussions. Okay. You're upset about something. Let's talk about it. Let's get to the bottom. Let's talk about it. Let's get to the bottom of it. How do you feel about this? This is how I feel. You know, this is where I'm coming from. Right. So we just need to get to, to that point and, and keep going there. And, you know, that's what we can do. You know, that, that's what I can do. That, that's what I personally try to do. And, I, and I'm not judging anybody else for what they do and what that, that's their time. That's their. But this is what, you know, we can do. You know, right. that's what I hope. So. No, it's you too. And people ask me, well, Rich, you can help. You know, you have a platform. But I'm like, look, my platform, if I post something on Facebook, it's going to turn into it's 200 comments later, two people fighting. I just don't want that either. So the way that I help is I verbally talk to people or I talk to fans. If I see them, if I see them in public and say, Hey, look, how are you feeling about this? All right, well take it easy. Don't get too upset if this doesn't go your way or if this does go your way, just, you know, fight for your rights and um, 
you know, that's why I liked, uh, you know, Ruth, you know, she passed away RGB and stuff. And it's like, she fought for women's rights, which I've always fought for too, because my mom raised me as a single mother and I've always seen women really struggle. Um, and so, I mean, you just kind of fight with what you can possibly, you fight the good fight and you, and you fight the battles that actually need to be fought. You know, don't, don't fight every single thing. If someone has a, a small opinion on something, you just go, okay, cool. Yeah. You don't need to go out there and fight every single day. And that's a problem in America is, you'll say one thing or someone will slip up. You know, that's the problem is like, we don't know all the terms. I don't, I don't know all the terms for, for uh, the, the, you know, the gay community and trans. I don't know all the terms. So if I mess up in say trans or something, and I don't know, you don't need, you don't need to try to end my career. You just need to just be like, Hey, Hey, Rich, boy, say, Hey, they, you're, it's, they refer as this. Oh, okay, cool. No, help people along the way. You know, we, we want to cancel people's careers. We want to see blood all the time. We want to see, if a celebrity says something that they weren't educated, yeah. they were like, oh, in this career, look on his movies. It's like, he didn't know this person was trans, okay? He just didn't know. Sure. We don't know. People don't know about me. I, I have a gluten allergy. It's not like, oh, I don't, I don't try to fight the waiter in the parking lot and get him fired because he brought me a piece of bread. Yeah. He just didn't know. I talked to him about it. I educate him. Talk to him about it. You know, don't be okay with it. Give people a break. You know, everyone's human. And I, I think we just, we want so much blood in this country. We always want someone to, to pay for it. And it's like, man, people tried. I don't, I don't know. They're, they're trying, you know. <laughs> I agree with, I agree with everything you just said, man. I'm a hundred percent. I'm a hundred percent behind that. That absolutely. That message. A hundred percent, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cancel culture. It's done. It's I'm done with it. I want to cancel, cancel culture. Like yeah, it's, cancel, cancel, uh, yeah. You know, but I get where it came from. Again, it's like I can understand where the wave came from, right? People are frustrated for so many years and feel, you know, silenced. And, you know, I get it. Uh, but at the same time, we can't let it, you know, one wrong can't right another wrong. Um, right. So, you know, yes, um, not, not down for just canceling people over a mistake or something they did 30 years ago, a comment or this or that. First of all, people change. Now there's certain things, right? You, we can agree on, but um, most of the things not, I, it's just like, Jesus, come on people. Like, even if you did that thing, it's like, who are you now? What are you yeah, saying about you know? it now? Right. And are you apologizing? And are you moving forward? I'm all about, I hate if someone apologized, like, yeah, apologize and cancel them. No, what are we asking people to do? <laughs> what are we, right? All we're doing is showing them, yeah, go ahead and come forward and apologize. We're still going to get rid of your ass. That's just going to make people dig in deep. I mean, it's just stupid. It, it, it's like we need to have forgiveness and there needs to be redemption. Otherwise, yeah. what's, what's the point? And if somebody's going to tell me, no, I've never done anything I need to ask for forgiveness for or I need redemption for, you're a fucking liar. You're I a liar. I don't care who you are. I mean, every day, every day, right? Yeah. Just, and you know the context crazy. of it. You don't know the context. Like, I love Houston yeah. rap, so I always I tweet out, I tweet out Houston rap lyrics all the time. Houston rap's a big deal to me. I grew up here. Me and Bun B own a business together. Um, oh, nice. I, I always tweet out rap lyrics, but I, I stopped doing it because I think some people didn't know if I was joking. You know, like I would, I would tweet out things like... Uh, they thought maybe you, know, you were mocking it or something. Or mocking right? it or, that, yeah. or if I was making fun of it or if I was being... Yeah misogynistic or something because i would you know you say like oh i got more hoes than a home depot up in this bitch or something like that people yeah. are like oh my god he really is referring to women as hoes it's like no 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 that was rap <laughs> lyrics this is twitter this isn't i don't it would never <laughs> refer to that so you 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 kind of you kind of like stop i mean the world at some point has become less fun because you really can't tell a joke anymore someone's gonna get hurt and someone's gonna run and cry about it and you're like i understand that though i understand that they're hurt i understand that it's not okay to good old boy tell jokes anymore and that we should um and jason isabel has a great song about that called like white man's world you know it's like i'm a white man living in a white man's world and it's like very true because you know there is there's privilege out there and you just kind of educate yourself on like how we can make everyone live in harmony and, and work um, and if there is a injustice then we'll, we'll put it we'll put it on a microscope and we'll try to figure out how we can make it better but just yeah. us having the conversation is how you do it you know i don't go out there and yep. you know throw a brick at my neighbor because like he, he wears his, you know, friggin' like no fear t-shirt and his Trump flag. I don't, I, you know, it's one of those things where like, I, I, that's not going to solve it. I can go talk to the guy and go, Hey, by yep. the way, um, 
we have a neighbor that's African American, and you know, it'd probably be better just if you wouldn't put this flag up and stuff. You'd, you'd be like, oh, really? I'm like, yeah, it's kind of insensitive. And like, oh, okay. And I'm, if I probably wouldn't wear his Big Johnson T-shirt while he's fishing or some bullshit around a woman or something, you know. It, you can you can change by making small steps. You don't have to be radical, and that's kind of the whole point of that. Boy, I 100% agree with that too, man. I really like yeah. that attitude. I really like that attitude. Yeah, small in incremental. You could be an example for people. That's the best way to get people to change, right? Like that's the best right. way to get people to open up to certain things. You know, growing up in Texas, I tell people all the time that that's, you know, such a big thing here. Like me being a liberal, for instance, like I'm around conservatives like crazy. Okay, I grew up in the Dallas area, first of all. Yeah. That's all conservative. Okay, so like I'm used to my whole life trying to meet people and I don't want to say halfway, but right, find the right somewhere we can meet and, and talk and we can have disagreements and, and it's fine. And, you know, there's nothing to it or, or they have certain ideas about, let's say I'm, I'm half Mexican, for instance. Right. So let's say right. for instance, Mexicans, right. They just have this idea of Mexicans. So right. what do I do? I just, I continue to be their friend and blah, blah, blah. And over time they like get this different idea of what Mexicans are. Right. Literally, that's that, that simple. Um, does that make them a bad person? Is that no, they just, it, you know, just grew up in a different way or this or that or just didn't see it, whatever the case may be. Um, you know, and that's just how it is. And, that, and I'm fine with that. I don't just turn people off and I'll oh, fuck you. And yeah, I'm done with you. You know, they just I just don't think that now there are certain people that I, you know, there's no hope for. Right. Like there, there are two ends of a magnet that don't get. And sometimes you have to just right right Th this is not for me um but for the most part that's just not the way it goes you, you gotta just sort of and, and maybe you, and maybe for you yeah. too right maybe you need to yeah, learn something sure. as well you know i, I mean I'm, I'm irish my parents are my great-grandparents are from you know you know europe and ireland and um i explain people it and about texas we're talking about texas because of this podcast as well i i, I call texas uh like mexican diet I'm like, dude, everyone Texan, everyone, every Texan is a little bit Mexican. You're like, what do you mean? I was like, Mexican culture is just a thing here, man. Yeah. We all go out and eat tacos. We all go out and eat fajitas. We all, we all love margaritas. We say, oh, but Cinco de Mayo. Like, Texas is very Hispanic, and every person has is somewhat Hispanic. Even if they don't show it or they're not totally bloodlined to it, we are. I mean, that's – Every I grew up in, in Texas. Every house had uh, one day a week was Hispanic day at the house. Tacos, fajitas, margaritas. There was there was a thing, and that's what being a Texan is all about. And I think that's why Texas kind of. I think Texas gets it better than any other state is because we, especially growing up in Houston. I grew up with, you know, my first day of school in sixth grade was probably three three Asian people, uh, four Hispanic people five African-Americans and probably four white dudes. I went to the Strapper High School. Like we were div diverse. We never saw it. We, we, there wasn't racism really because like we were all, we were so intermingled and our parents were all working for Exxon and Chevron and the ship channel and, you know, import export. And Houston has had that thing about it where we didn't, it wasn't a thing for us because we, we why would you make it a thing? You know? You wouldn't because it's so it's so there. You would just start trading cultures. You would go over. I loved going to my friend's house that were Korean because I, I got to eat different food. They loved coming to my house because their parents didn't ever make mac and cheese. It was it was <laughs> weird, you know. But it was cool, and that's why I think that Texas is, is a giant melting pot, and that's why I don't think the states ever had a problem with it too much, you know. Yeah, some uh, parts. I mean, there, there's some parts of East Texas that are a little still backwards in West Texas. That's, but. that's anywhere, right? right? That's literally even in other countries. You go to the small towns in other countries, they're the same way. Trust me. The, the, right. uh, when I, small towns in Spain hated me as an American. I mean, yeah. just hated me, dog. I mean, I'm talking hate, hate, you know, wanted to see me gone. Uh, so, you know, it don't matter where, you know, so yeah, that again, it's just perspective but yeah man i i agree with you there uh 100%. i got a beer thrown on my head in france because i had cowboy boots on and this guy goes uh where are you from i was like texas and he's like bush and he threw a whole beer at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they were not a big fan of bush uh, apparently yeah, the french didn't like bush they didn't no, like bush. Uh, no, everyone loves bush bush is like friends with friends with the obamas like bush is like i think what, he came, what he came back Donald trump is he 
he made Bush look like like a like a baby kitten. A hundred percent, man. It was like, well, we we'll take Bush back. That's what people we'll said. Like, well, back. we'll take Bush. Yeah, yeah, we'll take it back. Uh, well, look, Rich, this has been such an awesome conversation. I think this is a good place to end on a positive note, right there, man. Yeah, about for sure. And, and right, and looking past that, and having open discussions, and I love all this, man. Um, gosh, I can't wait to have you back on, and we'll just talk like this again, right? We just kind of. Oh, I love that, man. Um, right? so let me know. We'll, we'll just get something in the books. And uh, thanks for having me. I'm a big fan of the show, and I think you have a great podcast, man. So it's an honor, and um, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. No, Rich, this, this is awesome, man. I, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I really appreciate taking the time. And th this is the kind of conversations that I love having. This is where we can make changes, man. It really is right. that simple. Um, so before we go, though, tell everybody how they can connect with you uh, online. Yeah, you know, my name's Rich O'Toole. It's goofy as hell. There's only one of me. So uh, <laughs> you just type it in, it's going to pop up. So every search bar you have from Google to Facebook to Twitter, just type in Rich O'Toole. The music will appear, Apple Music, Spotify, and um, – it's good. It's good music for good people. Honestly, it's like right down the middle. It's like country rock and uh, give it a listen. I, I think you'll enjoy it. So awesome, man. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, thank you again, Rich, man. I, I wish you uh, the best the rest of the day. I don't know what you got going on. Hopefully something good to eat. Uh, I see all this stuff. Oh, first of all, I see all the stuff you post on Instagram of food and stuff. Yeah. Holy, holy shit, dog. Okay. Look at you. Um, we'll have to I'm get together so, in person, I'm not so man. Overweight right now, I think. From all that's that. okay. <laughs> the, the corn, the corn belly, as my uh, neighbor calls it. Um, yeah, the corn belly. Yeah, I got that. The corn, the corn belly. Absolutely, me too, man. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> uh, well, we'll have to get together in person sometime, man. A barbecue or cookout or or something, man. That would be cool, uh, for sure. So, all right, bud. Well, uh, again, enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks again for your time, and uh, yeah, we'll talk soon, brother. Thanks again. Hey, God bless. Thank you so much. Uh, the Lone Star Play podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Yeah.